So I just wanted to give like a little quick overview of some aspects of celiac disease and turn it over to my colleagues to talk about some specific uh, features. Um, so as we know, celiac disease uh, used to be just in the realm of the gastroenterologist, but now it's a multi-system disorder and can involve any organ system. Um, the diagnosis still depends upon getting that intestinal biopsy, and we can talk later on about how important a biopsy is. I think it's really important. I got an email uh, like yesterday. Uh, I, I'm a pediatrician, a professor at Northwestern. My, celiac, my daughter, who's 21 and now living in New York, uh, was diagnosed with celiac disease. You know, we opted to not do a biopsy, um, and now she's got lots of symptoms, and we're really not sure uh, what to do. So, you know, can she be seen? I said, yes, yeah, certainly that'd be really great to be seen. Uh, but it's like, oh, pull your hair out. Like a, a pediatrician's uh, daughter didn't get a biopsy. So you wonder what the care of his patients is really about. Um, so there are two things. It's consistent biopsy and it's response to the diet. Um, now, we've, we've found out, as you're all aware, that celiac disease occurs in about 1% of the population. In some countries, it's higher. Uh, like in Scandinavian countries, in Mexico, uh, in the Middle East and in North Africa, it's a bit higher than 1%. In some countries it's a little bit lower, like in Germany for some reason. Um, but it's common all around the world and it's 1% of children and 1% of adults. Um, it's 1% of men and 1% of women when you screen, but women are diagnosed three times as commonly as men. Um, so it seems that women get better health care than men. And there's this, in the US at least, there's this compulsory thing that women have to see their gynaecologist once a year. Um, men don't have to see any doctor, but women seem to be getting better health care and they, they get picked up. In the US, it's 1%. The Fasano study that I was involved with, that was 0.8%. Uh, uh, more recently, there's another study that was 0.85 and 0.9%. So it's about 1% uh, all around the world. Um, you know, there's this unique thing in Northern Africa where these kids uh, have about 5% and it's of 10 year olds, it's like 13%. So it's all around the world. Um, now, but not everyone's diagnosed and the number of people diagnosed depends upon what country you live in. Like in Finland, they've diagnosed 70% of that 1% because they educated the doctors. In Italy, Ireland and Australia, it's thought that maybe 20% of that 1% are diagnosed. Um, we did a big study, and if you extrapolate it out, less than 1% of the 1% are diagnosed. So we have in our thing, oh, 97% are undiagnosed. It's actually 99 point something percent are undiagnosed in this country. And that's because the education hasn't kept up with where it is in the rest of the world. Um, uh, patients don't have diarrhoea, patients aren't seeing um, gastroenterologists, they're seeing many, many different doctors, and so physicians don't recognise it. And um, it was, there was a lot of research in the 60s in this country on celiac disease, and then nothing because of lack of pharmaceutical industry involvement. And, um, you know, educators and researchers aren't doing research on a disease that they didn't think existed that you can't get funding to do research on. So there's been no interest in celiac disease um, in this country. In other countries where there are national health schemes, they've put emphasis on a disease like celiac disease because if you diagnose it early, you can prevent a lot of complications and, and delay healthcare costs or prevent healthcare costs. So like in the UK, you get all the gluten-free food on prescription, in Italy, you get a card that entitles you to gluten-free food, but you've got to see the doctor every year about your celiac disease and see the nutritionist every year to get this card that entitles you to gluten-free food. So the standard all around the world uh, varies. But the rate of diagnosis is going up. Um, I don't know how well this projects, but this is uh, the Wisconsin Children's Hospital, and you can see that the number of kids in the area hasn't changed but the rate of diagnosis has shot up. And then we, we looked at the Cigna database, 10 million insured people, 
and showed that between 2000 and 2003, there was a doubling of the number of people diagnosed with celiac disease. But if you extrapolate that line as if it was a straight line, it's still less than 1% of the 1% in 2009. Now, it might have gone up steeper and the rate of diagnosis might have gone up more, but we don't know what's going on really in the health of this country. In, uh, like in Sweden, everyone's got a health care number and they can follow everyone through life and death and find out really what rates of diseases are and, and how things change. And so we learn a lot from like the Scandinavian countries. Um, now, celiac disease is actually increasing. It's not just an easy, easier diagnosed condition and it's going up. Like this is data from Finland that shows that the amount of celiac disease in a certain population has gone up and it's gone up in parallel to other autoimmune conditions and allergic conditions. And it's, it's all over the world that it seems to be going up. And this uh, woman I know from Finland, she was talking at the meeting in Amsterdam recently, and she said, you know, maybe if we all live long enough, we'll all get celiac disease. But we're not going to live that long, Thank okay. thankfully. Uh, because they've looked at elderly people in Finland, and about 2.5% of people have celiac disease uh, compared to 1% of the general population in the older group. And uh, there was this epidemic of infantile celiac disease in the late 80s and early 90s in Sweden. And those children are now aged about 12 in Sweden and 3% of them have celiac disease. So it's increasing. Um, in the United States, uh, back in the 50s, uh, you know, Murray looked at 10,000 serum samples of people going into the Korean War and 0.2% had celiac disease not diagnosed, but based on the stored serum. Um, and now it's 1%. So that within the 50 years, it's um, increased fivefold in the US. So this disease is increasing. So we're all on the forefront of this. Now, why do we have celiac disease? There are genetic factors, there's gluten, and then there are environmental factors. Now, we know that it's genetic because you've got to have this HLA, DQ2, or DQ8. Um, and, uh, but, but that's not all you need because 30 to 40% of us have that gene, um, but only 1% of us get celiac disease. It's thought that there are other genes, multiple other genes, that fe feed into you getting celiac disease. Now, as we know, gluten is the term for the storage protein of wheat, and there are similar proteins in rye and barley. And you can see in this genetic tree of the grasses that uh, wheat, rye, and barley are closely genetically related. And oats actually more resembles rice genetically. Um, and all these things are safe down in this direction to eat. 